Welcome to Kara's Cures, where we explore the cutting edge of wellness. I'm Kara Sundlin. Are you done with deadlines? Well, a new survey shows 70% of Americans will no longer set harsh deadlines to achieve their goals. I am speaking with Elena Armijo. She is an executive coach about the power of pausing to actually achieve more. Welcome. Thank you, Kara. Thank you so much for having me. Is this part of the pandemic that we're just done with having too much to do? Very much so. I think it uh, occurred before the pandemic. We were starting to realize that rushing towards the end of the year and creating our goals before January was causing a lot of anxiety in people. And now with the last 18 months, definitely we're seeing people are just overwhelmed with the thought of more goals. Yeah. And I know you deal with a lot of executives and, you know, it, it's typical around this time of year if people are starting to get ready for end of year or performance reviews. You're going to write your three goals. You're going to talk about how to get to them. You're going to have a metric of a deadline. Is that old school? And people are afraid they're not going to be productive. So what's the alternative? Mm -hmm. Can pausing be productive? I think pausing can be really productive. And that's what I'm offering is allow yourself permission to take a second to just breathe and be in the space of what you've created or gone through this year. So I think this is a perfect time for employers or C-suite executives to take stock of what they've accomplished. And as you're planning for quarter one, we all know that everybody's gonna look at quarter one, but take a minute to really luxuriate in what's gone on. And if you allow yourselves to, to do that, then I think that your employees will also have permission to do the same. You talk about intentionally resting. Um, making time, and, and I talk about this a lot on the show about let's turn your daily grind, which isn't going anywhere, into a more sacred grind. Uh, one of the techniques of even writing breathe on your to-do list. But people sometimes think, oh, that's a little woohoo, or I can't do that, or I would do that if I had time. Why is that the wrong way to think? Well, you know, I like to say that you, me, and Oprah all have the same amount of time in the same day, we, right? We all get 24 hours. As humans, we've agreed that we get to have the same amount of time that we've given ourselves. So the only thing you can do is change who you be about your time. That's really what we're looking at. So slowing down, experiencing the moment of every hour is a way to start. Now, I know that sounds um, hard to do and like, wow, I can't sit down and experience every hour that way. But if you give yourself permission in the moment to, like you said, breathe before you start a meeting, take a moment at the end of the meeting to say a gratitude reflection for the person you were just with, or intentionally take some breaks and walk in between meetings. I think all of this sources you in a way that um, doesn't have you running to the end of the clock every day. Right. And so that's sourcing, meaning that, you know, we run on empty, just like our phones, just like all of that. So uh, whether you're in the corporate world or you're a mom um, with maybe less control of your time because you're dealing with your kids. Yeah. Um, where are some simple ways? I like to say that, you know, the bathroom might be a good place. We all go to the bathroom. You could take a couple extra moments in there to breathe. Or I think people just finding moments to allow that rest, that pause that you say is so helpful. Yeah, I love that you use the bathroom example for moms is perfect. For me, it's like, can the dog stay outside the bathroom door for a second so I can just have a minute alone <laughs> while I'm walking around? And, you know, for executives, it's literally that can you give yourself two minutes before you take your next call to do square breathing, which might be, you know, a series of breath work that you do to get intentionally into the flow of the next call. Also, at the end of the day, what are five things you're grateful for? It does sound very woo woo. I will say that. And just the simple act of being thankful for what you've created takes pressure and weight off of what's coming next for you. Uh, meditation is one of my favorites too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we talk a lot about meditation on the show, but when you talk about gratitude, you mentioned Oprah. That was one thing that she um, has said that changed her life more than anything. And obviously she's had an incredible life, but she said she started keeping a gratitude journal and everything shifted. So this doesn't have to take a lot of time. It could be a, a scrap piece of paper next to your desk or even on the kitchen pad. If you're feeling yourself getting overwhelmed, a strategy could be to sit down right then and just take a minute or less and write, start writing a few things you're grateful for to shift you back. Mm hmm. 100 percent. That's my favorite. My favorite are post-it notes, too. Can you put them on your computer? Can you put them on your fridge so you see them in the morning? And it's it's gratitude at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day. What's the intention that you want to have? Which for me, today's intention was um, fun and play. So maybe all day long through my day, I'm focused on that as a way of being instead of I need to get through my to do list.
which immediately squashes my joy. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, some are saying instead of uh, what you just did with your intention, instead of a to-do list, a to-be list, or maybe they're merged. Not that you're going to yeah. stop doing the things, but having that intention, as you say, just getting clear about who do I want to be today. 100%. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to create room for silence, it's going to take some sort of structure. Consistency is important. Yeah, I really think here's the thing is we, we, you know, just like New Year's resolutions, right? That's the other thing people are going to start thinking about soon is, oh my gosh, it's January. So I have to come up with something instead of that. What if it was just a daily practice of being and taking silence or gratitude or time, all the things we've talked about today as a consistent structure? So that there's nothing to change or get to. It's just simply enjoying your day every day in that pause that we're talking about to slow life down, to be more effective and not have your gas tank so low. So uh, that would mean maybe scheduling some mini breaks. I mean, what are some practical things that people can do listening to this? Uh, Even one thing that could start creating some positive change. One thing a day would literally be to do the breath work. I would say start there. Start with the breath work in between meetings or in between transition times. If you're at home, you know, and you're working from home, uh, transition to different spaces. So, but all of that through like a mini breath work practice, that's the first thing I would start with. And second thing, definitely the gratitude, which we've already talked about, but it's so important because I think it will open your heart space up and your brain to think about the positive things you're creating, as opposed to all the things that are still left on your plate. Now, I know you have a career and you had a career once upon a time in opera. So you're very good at, I'm sure the breath work, something that you were trained to do. Yeah. I think if I were to say that to some people do the breath work, like maybe my, my co-host uh, on great day, Connecticut, <laughs> yeah. you're like, what do you mean? Do the breath work? Um, yeah. what, what's something simple. I, I, I learned once it was four, 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 like just breathe in for four, breathe out for four and do that four times. I mean, there's like, what's a simple way to start saying, all right, I'm going to breathe. Yeah, I love that. That's one of my favorite ones, actually. We call it the square exercise. Brene Brown talks about this a lot. And um, you might just add in, so I breathe in for four, and then I hold it for four at the top of your breath, breathe out for four, and then hold for four at the end of your breath as well. And what it does is it resets your entire neurological system. It gives you your body a moment to just reset in in the in the literal moment so that you can uh, be a little calmer and think clearer. Um, as an opera singer, one of my favorite ones as well was to breathe all the way in as much as you can and then breathe out very slowly, almost as if you were um, breathing through a straw and see until your breath is all the way out. And again, it just resets the lungs and allows you to really feel your body in a different way than, you know, most of us don't breathe that deep in a normal day. Well, I think that's part of it, right? And the awareness, um, if you were to just notice, like just even take the one day to notice how you're breathing, you might notice that you're kind of holding your breath or just taking really shallow breaths because we're going so fast all the time. And that in and of itself is going to create stress. You're going to be in that fight or flight way more than you should be. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing when you do get back into your breath, how much your body expands and slows down. And then the brain starts expanding as well with what you can hold or be with or think through. Sometimes people would say, well, sure, I would do all that. This sounds great, but you know, I have a boss who wants things done. You are working with some of the biggest executives and companies in America. Are we moving that way? Are you seeing that companies are starting to recognize that pausing is productive and actually good for the bottom line and maybe changing the way organizations structure employee time? Yes. What I'm seeing is employers now are very focused on uh, mental well-being and wellness in the spaces, which I'm like, yay, we're finally here. We're all in the same conversation where we're going to really bring this into corporate America. So every conversation that people are in right now is how do we create a culture where people feel held, supported, and seen? And part of this is tending to things like this. How, how are people exposed to things they've never had access before, like breath work? Some people are like, what does that mean? Just like you said, I don't know what that means. Or um, meditation. People have never tried meditation before and haven't had access to even hiring somebody to teach them to do it. So I do see a trend where we're moving towards companies integrating wellness into even executive coaching. So leadership development combined. 
which is really creating a new shift into how we take care of ourselves in a work environment with a work-life balance. For sure. And if your boss is doing it, you know, it's like if you have a boss who never takes any vacation time and always stays late, it's hard to it's hard to uh, work under that person. But if you start seeing that the executive team is being trained, I know um, I've interviewed Ariana Huffington a bunch of times and she talks about yeah. her sleep challenges that, you know, big ideas are like fish. You have to go deep to get any good ones. So there's an encouragement. They have nap times at Huffington Post. They have nap times at Google. They have all these things. So I, yeah. I guess teaching people, if, if you're, you've mentioned meditation a couple of times, and, and that's something that um, I think has really helped me, but if you're just getting started, what are some free ways to, uh, to get going? Um, you know, there's YouTube or maybe trying out the Calm or the Headspace app, if you just want to start small. Yeah, I'd also check out something called Ziva Meditation. Um, the woman who created that, she was a former Broadway singer. So I really love, again, back to the music connection. Um, she has this beautiful technique that is simple. And that's, that, look, that's what I needed. I am not the person that's going to sit down and meditate and do it well <clears throat> and really have a practice that, you know, I think enlightens me in ways that maybe Buddhist monks do it. So I had a lot of judgments about meditation when I started. And so breaking it down to a simple practice and knowing that there's no right or wrong way to do meditation blew my mind. Right. Right. Cause then it gave myself permission to just try to sit in silence and see what comes up for myself which was really part of the, the beginning of my practice. So I would definitely check out some of those free resources. There's so many out there, but the number one thing I'd say is take the pressure off needing to do it right. There's no right way. Mm. It's just simply being with yourself and listening to what comes up. That's it. And, and talk about some of the science of how taking a pause is actually can create in the long term more productivity and of course, better health. Yeah, the science behind it is really pointing to the research of how we work um, in our brains, which basically, if, if I could explain it as a gas tank, you know, if we're going so fast all the time, we're compounding on top of ourselves, um, things like anxiety, uh, all of our, our bad habits that we do get highlighted when we compound it. So it's really um, filling your tank consistently. Like if you're driving and you're, you have a gas tank, filling it consistently versus letting it get down below that, you know, halfway mark or the, really the quarter tank, you know, until you see the, the light check engine light come on. And so that's, that's what I would say is that this consistency and the science behind it shows that you're actually going to be able to be productive longer and have more focused work as opposed to scattered work that's done on a very, very low burner. Yeah, uh, so long-term better benefits. You created something called the C-Suite Collective. So if people are listening and wondering how to maybe get some help, some coaching with all of this, talk about that. Yeah, I created the C-Suite Collective because we saw this gap that you and I were speaking of in companies where they really want to support their employees and they don't know how. They don't have all the resources in one spot or they have tried a training program and it hasn't really shifted anything in their culture. So they come to us and they work with us for a year. Again, top down, they start with their leaders, their C-suite, and then their managers, and then trickles down to their entire organization. And the idea is that you come and you get a coach for a year and you get to explore all these modalities that we're talking about. We have a sleep consultant, we have an herbalist, we have a Reiki therapist, we have a meditation specialist, a breathwork specialist, so again, people that you might not have ever tried or have been exposed to that now your company is investing in for you to be able to try. So maybe it's something you can mention to the boss or like you said, if you're just watching this at home and you're not in the C-suite, these are still things that we need to think about that pausing um, really does help. And I think as moms, it's gonna help your kids too because if you're just showing them how to run around crazy and do one more thing, they're gonna be frustrated. So modeling, whether you be a boss or a mom or a parent or whatever, if we start to model this, it really benefits everyone around us. Yeah. Yeah, so elenaarmijo.com, is that where people go if they wanna get more information? Yes, ma'am, you can find me there. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, thank you so much for sharing about the power of pause. And I hope that you find lots of bosses who subscribe to that way of thinking. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you want to find more content like this, you can look on Kara's Cures under the WFSB streaming news app. I also share on social media. So follow me there at Kara Sundlin. You can join our Kara's Cures Facebook group uh, to learn more about the cutting edge 
of Wellness. Elena, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for watching Kara's Cures, everyone.